Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're gonna start with this kit of silicone hookup wire and I was running out of uh, thin silicone wire so I thought it would be a good idea to try one of these uh, kits and the one I got is 26 AWG. There are six different colors in here. Uh, each roll is about nine meters in length. So let me strip a small piece so you can see how the strands look like. And the first thing I notice here is the strands are twisted inside the wire and I can count seven individual strands, which I believe it's okay for 26AWG. On the flame test, they glow red, so it's likely this is tinned copper. And I think I made a good choice with this uh, kit because the wire seems to be of decent quality and um, it should last me a while. We even have uh, markings on the wires, which is usually an indicator that they didn't skip this step during production to save a couple of cents. What I can recommend when comparing prices from different sellers, make sure it's the same stuff because I'm pretty sure there are different lengths of kits being sold for different prices and maybe different quality levels. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. Next up I have a small battery monitoring uh, gadget. This is specifically designed for the uh, balance plugs present on the uh, LiPo battery packs and the idea here is that you can connect one of these balance plugs to this gadget and it will give you information like voltage reading for the individual cells for the whole pack uh, as well as some useful data like min max values it's convenient to get all of these data without requiring a multimeter and probing especially in the field and I'm curious about the accuracy of this small meter, so let's compare the readings to a proper multimeter. The battery monitor is showing 11.22 volts, while the Fluke 87 is measuring 11.24 volts. So 20 millivolts of error here, but of course uh, that is acceptable for the kind of measurements that uh, you would need to do in the field on these uh, battery packs. So I would say uh, this gadget is uh, pretty accurate as it turned out from our test. Uh, so I can recommend getting one if you're working with uh, battery packs um, that have a balanced plug or who knows maybe you can think of a way to repurpose this for something else. As always you'll find a link in the description below the video. Next up I got a couple of microphone amplifier modules and I have this uh, small one which is based on the MAX 4466. Uh, this is a microphone amplifier chip from Maxim but I have doubts this is a uh, genuine chip um, because of the price of the module and uh, just comparing with the cost of a single chip from a DigiKey it's unlikely that they can sell this module for the price with a genuine chip in there and I also have a second module which probably has a more uh, generic uh, op-amp and I believe it's an LM393 both have a uh, small microphone uh, attached to the module and the reason I got these is for some experimenting I was recently working on a project where I wanted to have some audio feedback into a system so I ordered a few of these to see what kind of results I can get I also ordered this uh, external microphone to see how the system would behave with an external microphone and uh, these are all inexpensive parts and I don't expect the best sensitivity or low noise uh, from uh, such modules but they might be just good enough for experimenting or uh, small hobby projects. Next up I have in my opinion the most interesting uh, uh, product out of this mailbag and one that will hopefully allow me to experiment more with a car's CAN bus network. What I have here is a CAN to USB bridge compatible or should I say a clone of the CAN Able adapter which is an open source project as far as I know. 
I was looking at building one of these adapters myself, but when I checked the cost of the parts, it was almost the same as ordering this one from eBay. So it didn't make any sense to make my own. Uh, it would probably have taken me longer to have one of these ready. So there is software out there that works with uh, this dongle and it should in theory allow me to capture data running on my car's CAN bus network. So far I haven't done any research, I don't know how the CAN network is shared between different modules on the car, so I need to look into that. But my goal is to identify certain messages, for example I want to be able to know when the car is put into reverse or when a certain system like the parking sensors get activated. So I can use that signal to activate for example a rear view camera feed. So what do you think about that? Do I have any viewers with experience on something like this? Would that be possible? Hopefully I'll get some uh, free time to experiment with uh, this soon. But I would appreciate some feedback and if anything good comes out of it, I will do a separate video on the subject. Next, something completely unrelated with electronics, but I got a slingshot. It's, uh, it's one of these cheap models from AliExpress with a plastic handle and what I believe to be a uh, metal part here. And when I was a kid, I was trying to build slingshots from uh, three branches. The problem was always finding uh, the perfect branch and some good elastic strings. Uh, and the, the best strings were coming out of uh, old uh, army uh, gas masks because those had some really nice silicone uh, rubber. When you were able to find that kind of rubber, you always ended up with a really nice slingshot. I used to play with a slingshot when um, I was a kid. And when I saw this on the recommended product list on AliExpress, I just had to order one. There were also some more expensive models which looked like they could really throw a punch. But I settled for this cheaper, simpler model. Now I'll have to see how good I can get at uh, hitting a target with this. I have to do some practice. I must say I had no problem importing this, but someone told me they might be illegal in some countries. My next module is a uh, breakout board for the SC16IS750. A complicated name for what could be said a complicated chip, but I'm sure someone in the comments will disagree and think otherwise. This is a chip made by NXP and its purpose is to be a bridge between an I2C or SPI interface and UART. You can have it uh, translate data received on the I2C interface and spit out UART on the other side. And the reason I got this was uh, because I was recently working on a project. I had this microcontroller without a UART interface but it had an I2C interface which was already present on a pin header. So it would have been useful to have one of these chips to do some debugging on the microcontroller by translating I2C to UART and using a simple USB to uh, serial converter to bring that data on, on a terminal window. I couldn't just uh, bit bang a UART interface because I had no free pins left on that uh, chip. And in the end, I got the job done before receiving this module by using a uh, logic analyzer and spitting out debug data on the I2C interface. But it's good to have something like this in the lab for uh, future projects. Next, I have a breakout board for the LM75 temperature sensor. And I'm sure most of my viewers know this sensor. It's a classic one. It's been around for a while. So it's likely you have seen one of these before. It has an I2C interface and it can output 9-bit temperature data with an accuracy of plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius over a fairly wide range. It's good to have a bunch of these breakout boards in the lab to use as a reference or comparison value when you're trying to determine, for example, the accuracy of the measurement you're getting from a particular system you built. Same as always, there will be a link to this in the description below the video. My next item is a temperature slash humidity indicator and you might be familiar with my rants on shipping times and the occasional lost package and this is one of those uh, cases where I first uh, ordered this 
uh, sometime in December 2018. I think I forgot to ask for a refund sometime in March 2019 when I realized this did not arrive. Then there was maybe a few weeks delay until I ordered a second one which arrived a few weeks ago. So you see it can be hard sometimes to get cheap stuff from China delivered. But anyway let's open this and see what we get inside. Inside the box you get this small plastic cradle, a couple of uh, double sided uh, adhesives and this is the uh, actual device, it's, it's quite thin, uh, as you can see it uses an e-paper display and works on a CR2032 battery and I believe we already have a battery installed. So I've just uh, checked these uh, measurements against uh, another measuring device I have in here and the temperature right now is 25.5 degrees Celsius, uh, not great on accuracy for the temperature measurement and the humidity is at 57%. So um, I can live with, uh, with that error on the humidity measurement but I would like a more precise temperature measurement and um, I'm not sure why this is not accurate because it for sure it uses some kind of integrated temperature sensor and that should have better accuracy than this. So it's not particularly accurate but might be good enough for general home use although I don't like to have like a 2 degrees error on the temperature measurement because a 2 degree variation in temperature is um, enough to make you feel uncomfortable in your environment. I like the form factor however and the fact that it uses this uh, e-paper display is really nice. It's visible from a lot of uh, angles and also in low light and uh, it also helps with battery life uh, because uh, as you saw it works on a CR2032 battery and with this e-paper display that should last a long time. I believe this is also a good source of inspiration if you are uh, into home automation and would like to build something similar and uh, they're pretty inexpensive as well so uh, check out the links in the description you might someone might as well design a uh, custom firmware for this to do something else with this display. And the last item in today's video is a set of crimp terminals. These are JST.1 inch female crimps and basically this is the part that goes into a female JST connector at the end of a wire. As I was working with some JST connectors recently I ran out of these and I ordered a set so I can crimp my own wires. It's always nice when you crimp your own wires because uh, they are the right length and color and they look professional. I paid under $2 for a set of 100 pieces delivered, so that's not bad. Probably not the same quality as a well-known manufacturer, but good enough for home use. This was all for today. As usual, you'll find links in the description below to all of the items shown in this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you next week with a new video.